more shocking evidence of how some people, often children with learning disabilities, are being isolated in mental hospitals. After our first report into the anguish of families desperate to help loved ones locked away, others have come forward to talk to us. And their plight is quite simply heartbreaking. You may find parts of Peter Smith's report really upsetting. Bare walls, nothing but a plastic mattress on the floor. This is the hospital room Hayden Remy has been put in for the last month. Hayden is a 10-year-old child. He has learning disabilities and autism. He came here because his mum asked for help with his care. A lack of facilities for people with his condition means this is what help for Hayden looks like. When I'm showing family members and friends the photos, they will say it looks like a prison. Um, there's the windows flap open and shut, it's freezing. We were met with a lot of staff saying that they weren't trained to deal with autism or learning disabilities. Just made to feel like he was a problem and not a human being. He wouldn't keep any child in the room that he was in. It was horrifying. And Until now, Hayden never spent a night away from home and family. A life in stark contrast to the hospital room. Dancing daddy, As he grows older and more challenging, his mum says she's been pleading for extra support, but nothing came. He reached crisis point, and that's when Hayden was taken away. No toys, no crayons, no colours. You want to go? You want to go? Yes. I know, you can't. In these conditions, Hayden was sectioned for assessment for 28 days. Very rarely was he taken outside. I was every day asking, please, can he be taken outside? He was stuck in that room and medicated to stay asleep, effectively. Um, Sedated? Yes, yeah. He stopped talking to us, really. We'd just sort of get one-word answers. He just looked really vacant. To have to walk away and leave your child and not know if, if he was going to... It sounds dramatic, but if he was going to stay alive. JC contacted us after seeing our investigation into adults with learning disabilities and autism who are locked away indefinitely. We revealed allegations some are being sedated and put into isolation rooms when they don't need to be. JC fears this is Hayden's future. It just seems like things are very similar and going in the same direction. That could be my son. Do you feel like he's just entered the system? Yeah. It's just the beginning for us, um, and I'm terrified. It's pretty bleak. Yeah. He's only 10. He's 10. We've also been contacted by parents who tell us they are being intimidated into silence by the hospitals. This mother asked us to protect her identity, so scared is she that there could be repercussions for her child's care. She was told her son would be home within a few months, but a decade on, he's still locked up. Nearly half of his life has been locked away like an animal for nothing more than having a learning disability. And you've no idea when or if he can ever be released. Yes, we regret ever asking for help because it's been so detrimental with real poor quality of human rights, the trauma, the abuse, the institutionalisation. When we hear of families at the start of this journey going through what we went through, it's soul-destroying. We put our findings to the former Children's Commissioner who's now advising the NHS on improving care for children like Hayden. Children and young people are left languishing in institutions for any amount of time it's not needed. It's something that has no place in this country. I think it is a system which is broken for these very vulnerable children. It needs absolute leadership from the top, which is where governments come in. And they need to make sure that there's a system that is accountable. In the free, free friends winker malls. For Hayden, there has been a glimmer of hope. Since his mother contacted us, he's been discharged to a respite centre that is equipped to deal with his condition. He's thriving and smiling again. The problem is, this placement is only temporary. It's bittersweet because after the end of this week, we don't know where he's going to go. You only know that he has to leave here. Yes. Yeah, he can't stay here. JC is in the dark about what comes next. Despite all her pleas and everything she's trying, she looks ahead with only fear that Hayden 
is about to become another child trapped in this broken system. I mean, it's unbelievable, isn't it? But it's only part of the response that you've had since your first report, is that That's, right? We've been inundated. Um, we set up the email address and people contacted us. These are people who came forward. And what we've uncovered here is after exposing, you know, thousands of people who are being detained indefinitely with learning disabilities and autism, these are children. This is where it starts. This is at the very top of the stream. When there's no early intervention, when they don't get the need, the care that they need, they end up at crisis point. And as soon as they're in the system, Mary, it's so difficult for them to ever find a way out. Now, we have had response from Hertfordshire County Council. They say, well, we can't comment on individual cases. It can be difficult to find suitable care and support options for children with complex needs. Um, a spokesperson for the East and North uh, Hertfordshire and NHS Trust says throughout his time at Lister Hospital, staff provided round-the-clock care and did the very best they could. But what we are hearing is that these institutions themselves know that these are not the best places to be providing care, but it's a lack of investment that leads children and then ultimately adults to be kept in places like this, ultimately indefinitely. It's heartbreaking. Peter, thank you.